let's go back to what we're talking about, which is a stroke menu over here. So I'm going to go to the very top here where you have a stroke menu docked. And if you don't, uh, you just, again, double click these little dividers over here, grab the stroke menu and pull it over here. And because we're going to be talking about some brush settings, just grab the brush menu too. And we just drag this down here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close some of these. We're just opening these randomly while we're talking about navigation here. So we've got a standard brush and we have this one underneath here which is a dot stroke and generally speaking that's what you're going to use to just kind of sculpt so we're going to go through here and like we're doing before we're going to pull out this sternomastoid and you know kind of sculpt this out a little bit maybe hold on shift to smooth and this is a good general use uh, stroke if you go in here there's also a freehand stroke which will be very similar there's not a whole huge difference between the two freehand might be a little bit smoother but for the most part if it's on dot stroke and it's just for sculpting you probably leave it on dot stroke now some of these are going to be a little bit better explained with the one palette below it, which is our alpha palette. So you're going to see there's a dot stroke and we have drag rect. So we choose that one and then we drag. This is basically what's on by default when you start ZBrush and it's you basically drag uh, an object out on your canvas, you go into edit mode, that's the default setting. Now when I do drag rect now with the standard brush, it kind of just, I don't know, it drags a vaguely round kind of bump on them that you can barely see. To make this a little bit more obvious, this functionality, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our alpha menu. So go ahead and click on this palette, and just like it's another big button, so just like uh, the other big buttons in our scene, let's go ahead and close the render menu. Now uh, here's our tool palette with all our tool options, here's our brush palette, and here's our stroke palette, and now we're in our alpha palette. So I'll go ahead and choose this alpha 10, which is a star, and now with standard brush with drag rec selected, now we have a drag rec stroke, and now we can drag an alpha out, and this will be how our stroke works. Now you're going to see when I click and then pull on my object, it makes the star that big, and I can click and pull and rotate this thing around and pull it back in. If you want them to all be the same size, change it from drag rect over here to drag dot. Now when I start dragging this out, it's going to make a star here and a star here and a star here. Now, just like any other brush functionality, if I hold down Alt and drag, you're going to see it's going to indent. So I can let go of Alt and I can bump out, and I can hold down Alt and I can bump in. I can make my brush size bigger, and of course that's going to make the alpha bigger, and I make my brush size smaller, and hold down Alt, and that's going to make the alpha smaller. Let's go ahead and grab our undo slider and just pull that back. There's also spray stroke. So you can go through here and you can kind of spray those alphas over there. There's color spray, but we haven't gotten to poly paint yet, but essentially you're going to be spraying color variants. So you can see there's a color intensity variance and also a flow variance. Spray has the same. But since we have an alpha loaded in here, let's go back to our dot stroke. So we have an alpha loaded with our dot stroke. So now when I stroke with this one, you're going to see it's going to leave a trail behind. So one thing I need to bring up that's really important is our standard brush, you may have noticed as I drag this out, it's kind of hard to see, but there's actually a small little rubber band coming out from behind our brush that's smoothing it out as we stroke. You also may notice if I go in here with my standard brush and I just kind of tap on my mesh, it doesn't really do anything. That's because we have a little bit of lazy mouse turned on by default. So if we go in here to stroke, lazy mouse, you're going to see the lazy mouse button is on and the lazy radius is set to one. Essentially how standard brush works, if we go in here and turn our alpha off, uh, is it allows us to kind of sculpt on our object and there's a very slight smoothing effect that happens. I personally don't really like it, so what I'll usually do is I'll go into my standard brush and I'll just tap L and L is going to be, if you hold hover over the button there, L is the hotkey for lazy mouse. So you can just tap L, that'll toggle it off. And now when I go through here, I can make a small brush stroke and I can go through here and I can actually like touch little dots here or I can go and sculpt and just again, just tap. So you can go through here, make stubble, make little poor details and it'll let me because I don't have a little rubber band out behind my my brush stroke here. Uh, so this allows you, I mean, it doesn't smooth your stroke out, so you can get some maybe wavery, wavy results, you know, depending on how steady your hand is, but that can also be desirable if you're in here and you just want to like do vein detail. You know, you can do very tight, twisty turns. If we turn lazy mouse on and we try to do the same thing, it's going to give me a very smooth effect. In fact, let's go ahead and undo back here. 
In fact, if we take this lazy radius and we crank it up to one, uh, well, it goes up to 200 now, uh, it'll leave a rubber band behind the object. Now this is a very long rubber band, but you see we get very smooth results. So let's take this down, like let's say like 27. So now I can use this to again just do very nice smooth results. If we want to do like a superhero outfit and kind of go through here. You can see it gets this very smooth results if you want to like sculpt wrinkles that are very soft and controlled wrinkles and have a very smooth fall off. This is a great way to do that is to turn on your lazy radius. Of course, what you can do is you can say, okay, I'm going to be sculpting with my standard brush and I want my lazy radius at a 27 just for nice smooth strokes. But then if I want to, I can just tap L and then go through here and have a little bit more control over my small strokes here. So I can go through here and I can also kind of punch in little dots or little imperfections if I need to as needed. And then if I need to I can just tap L to turn that back on and now I'm back to my long lazy stroke. Now going back to the alpha functionality, if you turn on uh, our triangle alpha here and we'd use our brush, you're going to see it kind of stacks them on top of each other. So we have our lazy radius on, we have our lazy mouse on, uh, but the lazy step is set to 0.25. So you're going to see it's kind of overlapping. If you set this lazy step to one, now they're going to be right next to each other. So essentially a lazy step of one is going to put an alpha every single alpha unit. Uh, again, if we want to kind of overlap those a little bit, let's say 0.75, so a little less than one, and now you're going to see they're going to overlap slightly. If you want to space them out even more, you can say like 1.5, so a little more than one, and now you're going to see they're a little more spaced out. Also, you can go up here to your Z intensity and crank that up, and now you'll get an even bigger read, or more contrasting read, because it's punching into your object a little bit more. Now, if we go back to a drag rack stroke, so again, we're going to drag the star out, you're going to see it kind of has a bend to it, and it kind of fades towards the edges here. In fact, if we make it more obvious, we go into here to square alpha, you would expect it to pull a square out, but it kind of pulls a square out, but it kind of rounds itself out, and it kind of fades in the corner. Where that comes into play is essentially up here with our focal shift. Or remember, if you hit your space, hold down your space bar, there's focal shift right here. And if you tap O on your keyboard, that's also focal shift. So just like when you tap S, you can tap O, and that'll be your focal shift. I don't do focal shift changes that much, so usually I'll just hop right up here to the top right-hand corner. And you're going to see, when I pull this focal shift, that interior red circle gets closer to that exterior red circle, and vice versa. When I go here to zero, it's going to kind of be medium, and then if I go up, it's going to increase that distance even more, and then the lower it gets, the more it's going to go towards the outside. So if I drop this all the way down to negative 100, essentially our focal shift line is overlapping our other one. So now when I use this to drag it out, it's just going to drag out a straight rectangle. We go back to the star, drag this out. It's going to be nice and flat. It's just basically taking the star and projecting it straight through that alpha on our brush stroke. Again, if we go back here to our focal shift and crank this up to one or zero, you're going to see there's going to be a slight fall off from the interior of that brush, the small circle, to that large circle. So now when I drag this out, it's going to kind of fade off. You know, in the middle it's going to have the most impact and then it's going to fade off around that focal shift. If we continue that focal shift up to 100, which rarely I do, it's basically a lot of intensity right here in the middle and then it immediately fades off to almost nothing. So probably, I would say rarely does the focal shift go above zero. It, it doesn't happen often. Uh, it'll happen sometimes. But generally speaking, if you want more of your alpha to show up, do a lower focal shift to kind of get rid of that fall off on your brush, or you can kind of dial in that focal shift here. Let's go ahead and hit undo a couple times. Now if we go back to a dot stroke and we turn off this alpha, you're going to see there's a stroke jitter and brush imperfection. Uh, if we crank brush imperfection up, you can go through here, and that'll basically just add some noise. Let's also take this lazy step and put this back at 0.25. So now we can kind of drag this out and it'll introduce some noise to our stroke. If we turn this off, it's going to be at zero. And that's global, by the way. So if I go to my clay brush, 
and start drawing with brush imperfection on up at one you're going to see I'm going to introduce a little bit of noise in my stroke and then go back to the standard brush it's still there unless I go in here and turn that off same thing with stroke jitter if I turn that up you're going to see it's going to kind of bounce your stroke around if you have an alpha on there again same deal it's just going to kind of take that alpha and kind of scatter it as you go down the surface go ahead and turn that back down to zero so let's go B C B and that's our clay buildup brush and you see when I use this brush, it's a very common brush for kind of building up muscles, but you're going to see it kind of leaves behind a little bit of stuttering in your alpha there. A couple different ways to combat that. So we already know we can go in here to our lazy mouse, and we can take this lazy step and make it even smaller, and that'll kind of smooth that stroke out a little bit, but it still has some jitter to it. So to go in here to brush, reset current brush, we'll put that lazy step back at 0.1. And you see also with this one, the laser radius is set at one. So it's just on just a little bit, just enough to kind of smooth your stroke out but not draw attention to itself or take away too much control. Another thing you can do is under stroke modifiers, there's a roll distance. So essentially what this is gonna do is take this alpha and stretch it out as it rolls, the higher this value is. So if I take this roll distance and crank it up to like four, now when we roll this out, or <laughs> we use our stroke, it's going to kind of smooth it out because it's going to take this square and stretch it out even longer so it's going to give the appearance of smoothing out that stroke. If we make the roll distance even smaller than one, you're going to see it's going to stutter even worse. So if you want to smooth your stroke out, you can kind of stretch that alpha out and that'll give you a little bit of a smoother result. And again, you don't have to stick with this alpha. If you want to try like Alpha 38 and use Clay Buildup, this is another really interesting one. Not necessarily Alpha 38, but going through and changing out your alphas to get a different result for brushes that you use. And if you find something you really like, remember you can go in here to Brush Save As and save your brushes like we did in an earlier session. So give some of these a try with your different brushes and see if there's anything useful in here. And again, remember you can hold down Alt and let go of Alt, and you might come out with some uh, really interesting effects. Now, like we kind of mentioned earlier, if you want to say, I don't want to make any real changes to this brush or like my standard brush, I don't want to star off on my standard brush, I want to use that for sculpting. You know, keep the Z intensity where you want it, keep the focal shift where it needs to be. But if you want to make a change to the standard brush, you can take the standard brush, clone it off, and now you'll have a standard one brush selected. And now in here we can be like, you know what, let's change this to a spray stroke. We'll take this alpha, grab alpha 60. And now we can kind of use this Let's go ahead and change our Z intensity way down. We can use this to kind of stamp some leather texture uh, over here. So we can go through here and kind of spray some leather texture. And you know what? I don't need a lazy mouse assigned to this. I'm going to tap L to turn that off. And now I've got kind of a, a leather spray brush. And if you like that, you know, it's right now it's standard one. You can save it out. Brush, save as, and save it out as a leather spray or something like that. Now let's talk a little bit more about that roll option that we have, and we, we can't really spray our rolls, but we go in here to dots, now roll is available to us. If we hit the comma key, remember we have a bunch of brushes in here. I'm gonna go all the way over here to the right, and there's a stitch folder, so you can double click that. Let's go ahead and double click the stitch one. You're gonna see what we have is a brush that is started with a standard brush. You can see the base type there. It's a dot stroke. We have a brush alpha here, but you're gonna see roll is turned on, and the roll distance is set to one. So instead of just taking a square alpha, we actually have some detail in here. So when I take this brush and use it, you're going to see it's going to go through and wherever it's dark in this alpha, it's going to dig in. And wherever it's bright in the alpha, it's going to lift out. So you can use this alpha to kind of pull along our mesh and it's going to leave this alpha behind. If we turn roll off and try to do this, you're going to see it's just going to drag behind and we can kind of go in here and say, okay, lazy step set to one and it'll kind of stamp this alpha behind here, but see how it doesn't really work that well. It's not creating the effect of like having this thing kind of roll through your object, leave behind a divot with some stitches on the side. That's where roll comes into play. So you can go through here and you can just roll this out and we'll take this lazy step and set it back to say point one will work. Now if we crank the roll distance up here to like 5, you're going to see it's going to, like we said before, it's going to stretch this alpha out. So now it's going to roll it, but it's going to say instead of 1 per unit, it's going to stretch this out to 5. 
units per alpha basically. You set this back to one and that's going to go one per. And if you want to go even shorter you can say roll distance of 0.5 and that'll stack them even closer. But for now we'll set this to one. Now we're right about that you see no back and forth. I suppose we can go ahead and talk about that. Let's go back to our clay buildup brush and we'll crank that intensity up a bit. If we use this one you're going to see as I go back and forth it's constantly building up. If we go here to our brush samples we can see but build up is checked on so you can actually turn that off and now it won't build up as much. So you can you can like kind of go back and forth and it won't build up as much and then if you let go and come back in it'll continue to build up but with build up turned on you can literally just keep stroking in the same spot and having it build up continuously. But to go back to the stroke options here you see we have a no back and forth. So right now uh, it's turned off so you can go through here you can go I'm not lifting my pin pressure, I'm not lifting my pin up, I'm just going back and forth and it's building up with every stroke. If I turn on no back and forth, now if I don't lift my pin up, it's only going to go in one direction, your initial direction. So if I come in in my initial direction and then go back, it's going to just allow me to go in one direction without lifting my pin up. So if that's interesting to you, go ahead and use that. Since we're in here in the stroke options, there's replay last and replay last relative. So let's go back to Let's hit B. Let's go back to our standard one brush we are working with. We'll take this stroke and we'll say drag dot. We'll take this alpha and we'll just use alpha 06 for a nice general stamp. Tap L to turn lazy mouse off and now you can go through here. Let's crank that Z intensity up. You can go through here and stamp. If, again, if you don't want that fall off on there, take that focal shift to negative 100 and now you can go through here and stamp uh, buttons, I suppose. Or if you want, you can hold down Alt and stamp those in. Now if I go through here and I stamp and then I hit replay last, the hotkey for that is 1, it'll continue to stamp right over that initial stroke. So that'll just continue to stamp on your object. So if you ever want to increase a stroke, like if we go out of here and we say, yeah, turn this to a dot stroke, alpha off, and we go through here and make a line, let's take our focal shift back to 0, so we make a line down our object, we can do replay last and it'll just continue to replay that stroke continuously. For replay last relative, that's going to be based on my brush stroke. So if I go through here, let's switch this back to a drag dot and then go back to our alpha 06, take our focal shift down to negative 100, and we stamp. So if I do one, that's going to replay last and it's going to put my brush stroke right back where it is and it's going to keep stamping over that initial spot. However, replay last relative, with this, which is shift one, I can go through here and I can stamp and then I can put my brush somewhere else and I can do shift one. Now you don't want to change your camera angle so that's something I did. So if I go through here I'm okay I'm gonna stamp this I'm gonna do shift one and wherever I put my brush it'll replay that stroke wherever my brush is. Now this could also be achieved with just using drag dots so let's switch this over to like our dot stroke alpha off. And let's say we just put a line in here focal shift back to zero so I'm gonna put a, a line right here and then wherever I put my brush, just do shift one and it's going to repeat that stroke. So that can come in handy. And uh, you can also go up here to Z sub and turn that on and then do shift one and that'll do a Z sub of your brush stroke. So a little bit of cool functionality there for you. And one last thing, let's go to our regular standard brush here. Uh, we'll turn lazy mouse off by tapping L on our keyboard and we can go through here and we can kind of just drag out a stroke. We've already talked about roll distance, rolling in alpha to smooth this out. And we've talked about lazy mouse to smooth out your stroke. You can also, if you want to, go up here to mouse average and you can crank that up and that'll also kind of smooth your stroke out as well. Generally speaking, that's usually a last resort, uh, but it's there if you need it.